um, organizing this series of discussions. It's not a talk, it's not a conference. This is your playground. Just feel like do whatever you want. Ask questions, participate. This is what it's all about. It's about the discussion, the give and take. And it's about getting something out of it. It's not about showing how good we are in things, how much we know. Feel like expressing yourselves. And this is Lena today. She's a great speaker and she's here to interact with you. I think the presentation she created is really informative, but also it's created so you can bring you on board and make you ask questions. So don't hesitate. So what this is all about, normally I don't talk a lot as an introduction and Andre told me the last time just talk a little bit about this. So basically dark music talk started as an idea of bringing music experts, people that know more than we do, and bringing them in the same room so we can start a conversation. A conversation. In very simple words. So this thing evolved and obviously with 20 people in a rainy day, in a Monday uh, afternoon with Andrew Dapper, who was very kind to come from Birmingham and talk to us. This thing got the cameras, got nice place, where is Andre? The person that facilitate this for free. It's amazing and it's really great. For me I feel very proud. It's the third month this is happening, so thanks a lot for being here. This is making me happy. I, I see people that want to change things in the music industry. So it's all about change, it's all about tips. Um, this, is, this is all about, it's a vision. To change the music industry from within. I'm doing it myself, I'm trying to. Obviously I've been in London just for seven months, so I need more time. Change some things, but let's get this started. Um, Lena, she is a, a small introduction. She's an ex uh, member of Sony BMG for 12 years. I know she's done campaigns for many big artists. We all know Shakira. Yeah. <laughs> and she knows what she's talking about. She's now independent, freelancing, and helping artists launch their business. It's not about the do-it-yourself thing. And let's with social media and stuff. It's about being serious, about starting a business. This is what London Fusion is all about as well. So we're going to get started with mm -hmm. this. Uh, just so you know, if you're a musician, an artist, that, or a band that wants to go seriously with their career, at the end I will present you something that I've created together with my partner Pavel. And if you're interested in going to the next level, I will roll things out and we're going to start a little conversation about that. So, please, a hand for, for Lena and let's get this started. Thank you. 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 Just very quickly, I'd, I'd like to get an idea of who is actually in the room. Who here is, would classify themselves as an artist or a band or something like that? Put your hands up. Okay. Cool. And who here is looking to start up an enterprise? Okay. Okay. It's just good for me to get an idea of, of who I'm speaking to. Right. Now, did that work? Yes, it did. So, throughout the talk, if you want to tweet or Facebook or any kind of insights or thoughts or eureka moments, then feel free to. These are your tags. And it is hashtag Darker Music Talks for Twitter, um, at Positively Music for Facebook and Twitter, at Darker Music Talks for Facebook, and at Nina Swamba and at Tommy Darker for Twitter and Facebook. They work, I check them. So feel free to express your ideas to the world during this talk. That's fine. Moving on. Contents of the talk today. Um, I want to go through the purpose of this talk and I want to present you with some tasks that I would like you to take part in. Okay? I'll tell you a little bit about me, um, some definitions, some bigger picture thinking and how that bigger picture thinking applies to the music industry and some trends. Then we'll talk about how to be a music entrepreneur. I'll give you a little case study um, and summarise, and then you have homework at the end. Okay? So, <coughs> right. So the purpose of 
this talk is to clarify the concept for you. What does entrepreneurship mean? It's to equip you with some theory for bigger picture thinking, stuff that, some economic theory that I find very interesting, that is very interesting, to stimulate your thinking, to get you thinking and to get you um, asking questions. Um, with this talk, it, it's not here for me to give you answers. Okay, this is not what I would um, like to think as a, some kind of passive, um, kind of absorb some information and go away and not really act upon it. I want to get you thinking and get you asking questions, asking questions to yourself, to each other, to me, and like Tommy says, creating a conversation. Um, and with um, the questions that you ask, looking for problems that you can solve. Um, it's to help work out what entrepreneurship means to you, for you, um, to give you some takeaway action points to get you started, and hopefully to recharge your entrepreneurial spirit, because I do believe that entrepreneurial spirit is something that everybody has within themselves. So, your tasks for this discussion. So any insights that you have, uh, any ideas and action points during this session, write them down, write them down, okay, um, anything. Um, and next to those points, if you can, schedule them and put a date and time, because once you start to schedule something, it starts to become real. So you can write down an idea, it's just an idea, but once you start to schedule something, you are um, starting to think about executing that idea. So when you leave this talk, please review your points and act on them. <coughs> um, throughout the session, you'll be given these mini exercises to do, which will just be in the form of Q&A. So I'll ask you a question, I'll ask you what you think. Um, and then, of course, you'll be given your homework, which will be to tweet and Facebook to myself and Tommy what your uh, progress is over the next fortnight um, in terms of what you've learned today. And the one question that I'd like you to consider throughout the whole of the talk is why is this the best time in history to be in the music business? Uh, and it doesn't seem obvious, and it's an odd question to ask because everyone tells us that this is a terrible time to be in the music business. From yeah. which perspective this is, yeah. this is the question? Yeah, from which perspective? Well, as from, from, ah, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you know the answer. I think, I think I know, otherwise I wouldn't have brought you here. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's on <the> slides. <laughs> okay, so a little bit about me. Um, I started out in music when I was four years old, um, started studying music when I was four, and also dance. Um, and through school I chose the education pathway, so um, I did preschool music education, I went through and did my GCSE, my A-levels, I got two degrees in music, in commercial music, um, so I studied <coughs> music business at university. Um, I have over 12 professional years in the music industry. Um, I worked for Sony and I worked with Warner and EMI and Universal as part of an agency. Um, so that's in total the 12 years and in that time I ran um, digital marketing and PR campaigns for superstar artists from Beyonce to take that. Um, I also, in 2000, worked for um, a dot-com called People Sound. Does anybody know that dot-com? Probably not. No? So if you look at something like Last FM, it was the, pre it was the, the pioneering um, music streaming service at the time. So um, I came into my professional career in the music industry just as the internet was um, starting to make inroads with the major labels. Um, and now what I do is I run Positively Music and Positively Music is a business that is dedicated to training in digital business and entrepreneurship for um, the music industry. So this is the whole of the music industry uh, Everyone from if you you could be an independent artist, you could be a major label looking to you know increase your entrepreneurial um, spirit within um, within your the four walls of your labels. So um, that is what I'm doing today. Okay. So the first question.
question, this is kind of your first exercise actually, your thoughts. What is an entrepreneur? Any ideas? Shout out, put your hands up, it's up to you. And you want to a business idea and act on it? Yeah. There's no right or wrong answer really, I just want to see, see what you think. Facilitates yeah. innovation. Mm hmm yeah. Anyone else? Creates wealth. All of those, all of those are available. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? Yeah? Creates opportunities that you weren't there before. Mm hmm yeah. Yeah. So we can just look at some standard definitions. Okay, so an entrepreneur, this is from Princeton, someone who organises a business venture and assumes the risk for it. And then of course we've got Wiki who says, um, talks about entrepreneurship here, um, entrepreneurship is the act and art of being an entrepreneur or one who undertakes innovations or introducing new things, finance and business acumen in an effort to transform innovations into economic goods. But my favourite definition is actually a definition that has no real source, and it's this one. Entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people won't, so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. That's my favourite one. Okay, so um, most uh, when, when people start off in entrepreneurship and they think about building a business, they come into it with a very clear idea of what they want that business to do. Do they want it to be a lifestyle business? Where it's just a business that pays them and it maintains their lifestyle. So this is all the things that you would now need to think about. Do you want that to be a lifestyle business? Do you want it to be a business that is non-exec, that you manage yourself out of it and you just let it run? Or is it something that you're going to build, float, and sell? So in my, my, uh, from my perspective, I would like to, well, one of the businesses that I'm building, I would like to sell, okay? So from that perspective, yeah, um, I'm gonna be living a few years of my life like most people want, so I can spend the rest of my life like most people can't. Gets in the way of you getting, uh, spending your life doing what you love, I guess. Yeah. Although I love counting money. Mm -hmm. You like counting money. Well, no. Yes. You like to smash money. <laughs> <laughs> so go to the bank and pull out some, ask them for a couple of 50s and smell them. Okay, so that's finance. So the boring bit, no one really wants to look at it. So would you say that was finance or would you say that was accounting? Okay. So, so it depends on how you feel about the word. For me, it's the accounting. Accounting is the boring bit. Finance to me means the strategy. And the strategy means making money, and that I've got the idea of. Okay. So that's for me personally. Anyone else? What, how do you feel about that word finance? Do you feel negatively towards it? Hmm? Well, it involves raising money as well, doesn't it? And, yeah. Uh, that's, the, that's the difficult part. But, uh, it, it can be negative because it, it, it can hinder someone's risk by taking a risk or. Try it. They might have a vision on something, but the finance, they might give up on it because they say, I haven't got the money. Mm. So it can hinder sometimes, it depends on yeah. how strong you are. Yeah. I say with all yeah. these, these exercises, there's no right or wrong answer. The, 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 the here it's for you to work out what these things mean to you. Because um, if, for example, if you have posit a, a, a positive uh, view of money and finance, then um, yay. But if you are thinking, you're thinking, I can't ask for the money, or I, for example, I, I have, will I be able to raise the money, or you have fear or doubts around finance, then it's perhaps something that you might need to look at in your, you know, um, it's something that you'll need to tackle in terms of being an entrepreneur. Okay. So the next word, risk. How do you feel about that word? Exciting. Yeah. That's exciting. Got some risk takers in here. Oh no, you have to minimize the risk if you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> Calculated risk. Calculated risk. Yeah. So we got people uh, find risk at some Personally, from my experience, uh, the more the risk involves, the greater the results if you actually make things happen. Yeah. And I'm all about making things happen, so I love risk. 
I think it's it's quite boring having like moderating your risk. You just like cut things down so you can make things easier to achieve. I, I don't think that this is adventurous. Sorry. But there's there's the, the, well, it's people give risk in different ways. Um, we'll get to this later. But one of the things that um, uh, entrepreneurs in terms of their sort of the typical entrepreneur, their characteristics and sort of their personality, is they kind of, they like freedom. Freedom is really, really high on their values, okay? Um, and they enjoy the kind of, the hustle and that kind of risk-taking um, aspect of entrepreneurship. They, they, they enjoy it. You know, it, it might, it, they like that feeling of being a little bit scared sometimes. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush. So you do get that. Um, so the next one is innovation. How do you feel about that? Yep. Good? Yes, That's not surprising. Yeah. Sometimes in the process of taking risk, um, you, you innovate towards alternative forms of capital. You might even create new kinds of currency. Mm. And I suppose uh, in the climate since about 2008, we kind of need to do that anyway. Yeah. So good feelings towards innovation. Um, okay. I have something to say about innovation. Yeah. Um, because I see many people talking about innovation, I don't think necessarily they know what they're talking about. It's really easy to say, I innovate, but if somebody innovates for me, they don't talk about it. They just do it. Mm. It's easier said than done. This is how I feel about innovation. So for myself, I might try to do new things, but I'm not going to say, I, I innovate. You know, it's something that if you don't say for yourself, other people say that for you. I see what you're saying, yeah. 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 They, so, yeah. They, they always just say that you can create something original, but most people think innovation is just taking something and just, just modifying it or editing it and making it different. So it's not really original, it's just, just enhancing it or you know, just, yeah, just, just blowing it up or making it or just making it look, look a different way. Then, then, then it can be original. Something being original is sometimes rare. Well, sometimes I think you can create something quite original by hybridizing mm. two things, you know, crossover, mashups, whatever. Yeah, great. Mm. 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 Just starting new businesses in itself, innovation. You are changing every day and innovating and, 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 and adapting. What, uh, what you're doing, you may not end up doing exactly what you set out to do, but you end up coming into a completely different route. And so you need to be innovating all the time, but it's uh, by, by nature as well as you mentioned. Was anyone set out to innovate? Sorry? Was anyone set out to innovate? Um, I think they do to a point, yeah. I think they do. Entrepreneurs, they, I don't know what. Yeah. I don't know what they kind of say, oh, I'm going to be innovative. I think that kind of going back to your point. But they do set out to at least create something that is that is valuable and contrib that contributes. Um, and I think by that token, it can be innovative. Yeah. All right. So we'll move on. Um, and how do you feel about the word business? Is it boring? Yeah. One of the companies. I feel like organization. Business is organization. Like structure. It's, it's what it means to you, yeah. See, for, for me, business is partnership and doing deals, doing business with people. That's what that to me is exciting. Isn't business yeah. everything on the board? Mm -hmm. Isn't it finance and risk and innovation? Yeah, so it is. Business. Yeah. Isn't that the main thing? So it, it's the exciting part, basically, of your of your company of whatever mm -hmm. you're trying to to create. Yeah, it's all of those things. All of those things go into business, of course. Yeah. So. <coughs> so we'll think about those keywords and we'll look at those and kind of more later on how to manage how you feel about them. Okay? Right. So let's look at the bigger picture. Why is entrepreneurship important? Um, entrepreneurship is really important for economic growth. We're looking at the, the bigger landscape here. We're kind of looking at the fact that we have been in a depression. Um, rather, it's not a recession, it is a depression. We have a depression every 
50 to 60 years. Um, so entrepreneurship is key to economic growth with regards to that economic climate. Um, it's key to productivity, key to innovation, and key to creating jobs. Um, it seems the solution for faster global pestle change and challenges, like, do you know what I mean by like when I say pestle? You must know. Pestle is this part of, it's a kind of a business analysis. Okay, so pestle meaning P for political, E for environmental or economic, S for social, and T for t technological. Okay? So one of the things that we look at when we're looking at uh, sort of analysing businesses is we do a pest on analysis. So we look at how the, at what, um, how the political environment um, affects that business, the economic um, or, or environment affects the business, uh, the social uh, or society affects the business, and how technology affects the business. And I think we can all agree that one of the main drivers um, at the moment in terms of what we're experiencing is, is technology, okay? So, which is affecting us politically and economically and environmentally and socially. Um, so, what is actually happening is that high income and high human development countries have made entrepreneurship a priority due to this recent depression. <coughs> So what we're seeing here is that in every previous downturn, it's always been the small businesses that have pulled the economy out of the recession, right? So, and job creation is actually typically located in small businesses, okay? So when I, uh, we're talking about the, the bigger landscape, the larger landscape here, but, you know, we all talk about how this applies to music industry in a second, but it's, it's all, um, all relevant and all available. And innovation does typically come from the smaller, more agile, um, businesses that have little uh, that have access to little or no cost infrastructure. So what I mean by that is that you know you as a small uh, music business enterprise, uh, you have less red tape and less people to answer to, and you can move faster than the big businesses. And you have access to this infrastructure, this technological infrastructure called the internet, where you essentially have a factory in your pocket, in your pocket. It's a factory that has global reach, and it's in your pocket. So you could be anywhere in the world and talking to anybody in the world. And it's something that you couldn't do 20 years ago, okay? So, and it, you have instant access to those people. And that's why now is a very exciting time for entrepreneurs, <coughs> okay? So, Entrepreneurship is key to creating jobs. It promotes regional balance, so for example, regeneration of, um, of, of, of setting up businesses in regeneration areas. Yeah? Okay, now I can see that. Cool. Thank you. Um, it reduces the concentration of economic power, meaning that, you know, the big power agencies, let's say in the music industry, um, there's, there's a sort of a more equitable division of wealth, potentially. Um, it improves the standard of living and it enables export trade with other countries. So that, these are all the reasons why entrepreneurship is so important. So um, to sum up, and I'll read this to you. Here we go. All right, so Richard Branson, Right for the, de for the Telegraph, and this one, I think was in 2011, so I'm going to read this little <coughs> excerpt to you. And he put a call out to the general populace for entrepreneurs, and he says, building a dynamic entrepreneurial culture is one of the key characteristics of a healthy economy. A society which encourages new business and recognises the importance of startups and small firms will be successful on the global stage, meaning that we'll be more competitive, okay? Firing up a new generation of entrepreneurs will be a crucial part of our recovery and essential for creating sustainable growth in Britain over the next decade and beyond. 
So, how does all this apply to the music business? So, so your thoughts. Okay, this is a typical industry life cycle. Right, are there, do you, does everybody know what shakeout means here? No? Okay. Embryonic growth, mature and decline, being pretty self-explanatory. Shakeout is literally shakeout. Okay, so when we get to this stage in the cycle, this is where um, the, 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 the major players rise to the top and the little guys kind of get swept away, if you like. And this is where um, the big guys start um, buying up the little businesses. Okay, so that's what we mean by shakeout. So where do you think we are in the music industry right now? In terms of this set and these stages? kind of feels as though we're at both ends, so physical media is in decline, but digital is in the early stages. Yeah, spot on. Uh, sorry, just one thing, um, because we cannot really hear what you say, like, I, I try to change places so I can hear everybody, but please speak up a little bit when I do talking so everybody hears. So like you said, embryonic, there's an overlap happening at the moment, okay? So we have this um, phase out of the old and this embryonic um, experimental time really um, in terms of the new. So that's not happened, has it? Keep doing that. There you go. Boom. We have this overlap in the music industry. And we, I think we're still very much in this embryonic stage here where nothing is, the, things are, the thing with a, a very entrepreneurial um, time and a time um, in history where uh, technology is disrupting the status quo is that there's a lot of experimentation. There's loads and loads of experimentation. That's why we hear things like, oh, this isn't going to work and that's going to not, gonna, that's going to work. And, you know, the streaming will work, the MP3 is out, you always hear lots of conflicting evidence. And the reason is, the reason, uh, conflicting opinions, I should say, because, and the reason you hear that is because we're still experimenting. We, we still don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work. We don't know. So, and, and I really believe that unless you, uh, and, and if you don't allow people this, this phase of experimentation, and if you don't support and um, encourage this experimentation, then we're not going to get through this embryonic stage and get to growth and get to shake out and get to maturity. We need to move that experimentation stage along. Okay, so I'll talk about that a little bit later because um, there is a key, a key um, thing that I want you to remember for that. So, moving on to this kind of conflicting um, opinion in terms of where the music industry is and what it's doing and everything. So, music industry has been in recession for over a decade, okay? So, recording uh, uh, companies, publishers and touring, um, uh, they're resilient, but they're still challenged. The music industry doesn't make as much money as it used to, it really doesn't. Um, and technology has changed the way fans um, consume music and therefore the status quo. So, and this is from Business Insider, the music industry globally is down 64% from its peak in 1999. And the music industry is also down 45% from where it was in 1973. Um, Ten years ago, the average American <coughs> spent almost three times as much on recorded music products as they do today. Okay? Um, so now they're spending on other things, they're spending on video games. Um, and actually, sometimes you don't even they don't even need to spend on entertainment because we're all on social media, so we're just entertaining each other for free anyway. <coughs> okay, right? So if you're on Stalker Book, how much music are you going to be listening to, really? So um, 26 years ago, they spent almost twice as much as they do today. 